Good morning and welcome to Coast Kids Online. We are so excited that you have joined us this morning. Stay tuned for brand new ISO challenges at the end of this video. But first, let's jump straight away to praise and worship.
love if it was, am I living it? Do I live in it? So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand, I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith there in the life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Yeah.
welcome back from Praise and Worship this morning. I hope you had so much fun dancing and singing with us. Now it's time for a brand new video with Connect HQ. <sighs> Mowing the lawn, pulling weeds, planting flowers. All this yard work sure is tiring. But it's worth it. Connect HQ sure is looking good. It is nice to get off our feet for a little while, though. Why isn't Tony outside helping us? He's vacuuming inside. He vacuums when he's excited. What's he excited about? Uh, his cousin Ellen is coming for a visit. That wouldn't make me excited. My cousins drive me crazy. Are you sure Tony is excited she's coming? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Tony, and this is the time things got real fishy around Connect HQ. This way, guys. Perfect. Set that stuff down there. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's good, too. This stuff is heavy. I'm very, very impressed that you guys got it all the way from the storage unit up here. Explain to us again why you can help us carry your fishing gear. Oh, I just, well, see, I have to save my energy for my fishing trip with my cousin Ellen. <laughs> see, we go on a fishing trip every single year. <laughs> this one year, I don't know if I told you this yet or not. You told us. Oh, um, well, this one year, <laughs> um, she got a fish that was this big, and then I got a fish that was this big. It was the best, best day, day ever. ever. <laughs> hey, guys, we got a postcard. Dear Connect HQ, my name is Gage and I love Jesus. I want others to meet Jesus, so I'm always inviting people to church. My friends, my football coach, even people I met at the grocery store. But I always seem to get a no. How can I get people to know God if they won't come to church with me? I really want them to know and love Jesus the way I do. Help. That's great that Gage wants to bring people to church. You know what, you're right. But he needs our help to figure out how to get the church to them too. Hmm. Jake, why don't you work on the verse link, and Edison, why don't you work on the point link, and I'll work on the Bible link. Uh, it might be hard to work with the stuff in the middle of the room. Hmm. You know what, you're right. You know, why don't you guys uh, take this to the lounge, and then we'll get to work. It defies the laws of physics, but somehow I think this stuff is getting heavier. I need to stop and rest for a minute. Uh, I thought of a verse link while we were carrying this stuff through the halls. Really? What is it? Um, all this talk about fishing reminded me of a verse from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 17. Say it like this. Mark 1, 17. Mark 1, 17. Come follow me, Jesus said. Come follow me, Jesus said. And I will send you out to fish for people. And I will send you out to fish for people. Gage is doing a good thing inviting people to church. It's part of going out and sharing Jesus with others. Just like the first disciples did. Good work, Edison. Here she is, guys. Here's my cousin, Ellen! Hi, I... Hi, you must be Edison. And you must be Jake. I am so excited to meet you both. Tony's told me all about you, and I am so excited for our fishing trip, cause... <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if Tony told you, but we go on a fishing trip every year. It's come up. <laughs> this one year, the fish were practically jumping in the boat. Tony caught one this big, and I caught one 
this big. It was literally the, the best, best day ever. ever. <laughs> well, that is a really nice crackle box you got there. Uh, what? No, Jake, this is not a crackle box. It's a tackle box. Sorry, I've never fished before. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, wow. Wait, you, you've never fished before? No, I've never even held a fishing stick. Oh my. <laughs> It's called a fishing pole, Jake. <laughs> I learned that from my online fishing game. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait, have, have you never been fishing either? Mm. Oh, wow, you guys are really missing out. The tranquil waters, the smell of the lake, the feel of the tug when the line pulls and you reel in a fish bigger than the one that your cousin caught. <laughs> and don't forget the sack lunches. <laughs> Actually, I have some sack lunches for us. They're in the lounge. If you follow me, I can show you around. Awesome. And I also think that you're remembering the size of your fish wrong. Mm -mm. No, see, I clearly remember my fish was this big, all right? And that was just the first one. The second one was this big. <laughs> so now you're claiming that you got more than one fish? Mm -hmm. You are out of control. <laughs> Thanks, cuz. This place is pretty awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. We get to help kids all over the world with their problems. Seems like the perfect place for you. You've always loved helping people. Well, look who's talking. <laughs> How are things down at the hospital? I love it. You know, I get to share my love for Jesus with the people that really need it. I get to learn about my patients, see what their lives are like, and share with them what it's like to follow Jesus. What a cool story. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But I also like to get away and have a nice relaxing fishing trip. <laughs> yes, but... I haven't had a chance to organize my lures just yet. Well, where's the boat? Well, Edison and Jake brought it up from the storage unit, but I'm not sure where they put it. Okay, well, I'll go look for it. Okay, um, I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to find. It's a boat in a building. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> okay, so this is a... Tackle box. Mm -hmm. Very good. See, I like to organize my lures by color. So see, you can put your reds over here, then you put your yellows, and then you can split it down the middle right there. What does it mean to fish for people? Wait, what? Uh, what do you mean? Edison said Jesus told his followers that he would send them out to fish for people. What exactly does that mean? Well, you see, some of Jesus' friends were actual fishermen. Simon, Andrew, James, and John spent their entire life learning the best way to fish. And instead of fishing for fish, now they fish for people. Being fishermen was their job, right? Yes, but Jesus gave them a new job. Like I said, instead of fishing for fish, they fish for people. It's a little hard to understand. Hmm. You know what, here, maybe this will help. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. See the wonderful stories inside. Every day I'm searching, read through history and poetry. How much Jesus loves me. God's great story lives. There's no other book like this. This book. Is alive. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a big crowd of people gathered. As the crowd grew, the people pressed closer and closer to Jesus. Jesus saw two empty boats at the water's edge. The fishermen had left and were washing their nets. Jesus stepped into one of the boats. It belonged to Simon and his brother, Andrew. Simon? Don't you mean Peter? Well, later Jesus gives Simon a new name and calls him Peter, but that hasn't happened yet. So in this story, his name is still Simon. Got it. So where were we? Oh yeah, Jesus asked Simon to take him out on the water away from the shore. Right, and Simon did it. Jesus sat in the boat away from the shore and taught the crowds from there. When Jesus finished teaching, he said, Go out where it is deep and let down your nets to catch some fish. We worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. 
Simon and Andrew let down their nets. And this time, when they pulled the nets out of the sea, they were so full of fish, they began to tear. They called out to their friends who owned the other boat. Guys, bring your boat over here. You're not going to believe this. James, John, and their father, Zebedee, brought their boat over. Soon, both boats were so full of fish, they almost sank. The fishermen were amazed. They knew Jesus had performed a miracle right in front of them. Simon fell to his knees. He was in awe. Simon saw how powerful Jesus was and knew he must have been sent by God. Oh Lord, please leave me. I don't deserve to be near you. I have disobeyed God. Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Jesus meant that from that day forward, they would be telling people everywhere about Jesus and his power. And because of that, many would choose to follow Jesus. When they got back to shore, Simon and his brother Andrew decided to follow Jesus. Their friends, James and John, left their boat with their father so they could follow Jesus too. Those four fishermen left everything behind so they could follow Jesus' example. They learned about Jesus, spent time with him, and discovered how to do everything the way Jesus did. And that's how Simon, also known as Peter, along with Andrew, James, and John, became Jesus' very first disciples. Simon, Andrew, James, and John left everything to follow Jesus. Yes, but they learned so much. Jesus taught them how to follow him. And then whenever he returned to heaven, he gave them a mission to teach others how to become followers. And that's what it means to fish for people. Yes, even today, as followers of Jesus, we are meant to show other people how to become followers. That's why it's so important to invite people to church, like Gage is doing. Yes, but we can do so much more. We can tell our friends about what we learned about in church. We can meet new people and tell them that Jesus died for them. And then we can also share our joy and tell other people that it came from following Jesus. There is so much we can do to fish for people. Thanks for sharing that Bible link, Tony. Well, you are welcome. Now that we know that, let's get back to actual fishing. See, now that the lures are organized, easily accessible. Go get a catfish, you get the mouse lure right here. There it is. Shh, you scare away the fish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I know I'm on dry land. Okay. <laughs> it's relaxing, right? It is. You should try it on water sometime. I don't know. I don't think fishing is for me. I doubt sitting in a boat for hours is ever going to be my best day ever. I don't care how many fish I catch. <laughs> what? Best day ever. You know, I don't call it that because of the amount of fish we caught that day. I call it that because that's the day I decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> really? Not in a church? Nope. Out there on the water, in this very boat, thanks to Tony. Tony? What did he do? Well, wherever Tony goes, his love for God is evident. Yeah. It overflows into his life. And whenever we were out there on the water, he would tell me about Jesus and his love and what it means to follow Jesus. He has such joy, you know? Mm. And so one day I decided that I wanted that joy for myself. So Tony helped me pray to God and become a follower of Jesus. And that was your best, best day, day ever. ever. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like the point link we found for Gage. I'm on a mission to go fishing for people. Wherever I go, I want to be following Jesus and helping others be followers of Jesus too. <laughs> just like Tony. I like that. I'm on a mission to go fishing for people. And we can do that anywhere, at the church, on the water, wherever we might be. Oh, I have a question about worms. Of course, yeah. <laughs> do you have to put it on the hook? Like, yeah, you just slide it right on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think fishing is for me. <clears throat> I got the poles, check. I got the tackle box, check. I got the snacks, check. And check. All right, so what are we missing? Oh, the boat. Where's the boat? Oh, it's in the observatory. We are not carrying that thing back to this room. For goodness sake, I'm just a kid. Oh, guys, no, I wouldn't make you lug that thing all the way back in here. But if you could, just take it downstairs, strap it to the top of Ellen's car, we'll be on our way. 
It's really nice to meet you both. <clears throat> Hello Gage, Edison here. First I want to say good job on inviting people to church. It's just like the Bible says in the book of Mark. Say it with me like this. Mark 117. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Jesus has given us an important job to help other people know him so that they can follow him too. Simon, Andrew, James, and John caught fish for a living. It was their job, but when they decided to follow Jesus, he gave them a new job fish for people. And inviting people to church is just one part of that job. We can also tell others about Jesus in schools, in our neighborhoods, or even on vacation, like a fishing trip. So keep up the good work of inviting friends to church, and also tell them why you love Jesus and why you follow him. Don't get discouraged. God is with you every step of the way. You just have to remember, I'm on a mission to go fishing for people. From one Jesus follower to another, let's go fishing. Remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Hey Coast Kids, welcome to our brand new ISO challenges for 2021. Our first challenge is the Stacking the Cups challenge. What you have to do is get 15 plastic cups, then you have to stack them in a pyramid without them falling. You have 30 seconds to do it, and let's see how well you go. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go.